Here is Tom, a caring father who had the idea of retiring from the restaurant business, but with the intention of passing it on to his daughter. The catch? He never quite managed to do it. You know, ready to take over. What? Also, while Chef Ramsay is used to restaurants serving frozen food, Tom might be the first owner who believes freezing food somehow improves the smell and taste. And poor anyone who dares to correct this man because he's not afraid to throw punches. I got a more balls, more than him, and a, a lot of a half a dozen like him. How could Ramsay save the old hitching post along with its arrogant owner? Was Tom able to achieve the goal of passing the torch, or should I say spatula, to his daughter? Let's find out. At the beginning of this nightmare, we travel to Hanson, Massachusetts, a small community just outside Boston. That's the home of Tom Caceres, a Greek immigrant with a couple of successful restaurants on his record. In 2005, he bought the old Hitching Post, one of Hanson's most beloved restaurants since the 1950s, to pass it on to his eldest daughter, Andrea. But years after that, Tom still doesn't trust Andrea to run the restaurant herself. As much as she cares about the restaurant, Tom refuses to grant her full control of the old Hitching Post. When it comes to his daughter, he can be quite tough but it's even more challenging for his staff. That was the most stupid thing I ever seen in these kids in the longest I've been here. Add another arrogant owner on the list. Judging by Tom's confidence, one might assume that his restaurant was thriving. Well, quite the opposite, as they serve low-quality food, which has only alienated customers over time. Ever since acquiring the old hitching post, Tom has been consistently losing between seven and $8,000 per week, a predicament that has become unsustainable Hence, in 2012, Tom personally reached out to Gordon and even went to pick him up. During the drive, Tom mentions that he acquired the restaurant for his daughter, but she hasn't quite risen to the occasion yet. However, upon Ramsey's arrival at the restaurant, he meets the manager, Janice, who advises him to approach Tom's statements with a degree of skepticism, as not everything he says is true. He subsequently converses with Andrea, who expresses her aspiration to manage a restaurant despite her father's unwillingness to trust her fully with that responsibility. Of course, she isn't pleased with her father's take on the matter. Tom, on the other hand, thinks she's arrogant because she has different ideas to improve the business. What do you mean I don't allow you, Andrea? Do you I always do? Every right. After that family conflict, Gordon gets ready to try the food. And what better way to start than with a frozen lobster ravioli? After spitting out the first bite, Ramsay returns it to the kitchen. According to the owner, that was the first complaint he's received since running the restaurant. Of course, Tom, you don't get any complaints if you don't have any customers. It's simple. The next dish is the cranberry haddock with an unusual appearance. It looks like some bear in the woods. And I think the bear peed a little too, because the dish is watery. As for the rest, it's absolutely bland, undercooked, and depressing. Tom and Andrea's hopes lie in the final dish, the meatloaf. You would think a place called the Old Hitching Post would at least have a decent meatloaf. Well, meatloaf was made God knows how long and then frozen. Well, so much for that. After that disappointing culinary experience, Gordon heads to the kitchen to have a word with the chef, one-on-one. -on -one. Head chef Dan and his colleagues agree that Tom relies too much on frozen ingredients. Tom says it's impossible for them to serve fresh food daily. It's an insult to America. In this area, that's what they love. Well, buddy, you're in America. After Ramsay's scolding, the cooks must endure another scolding, but this time from Tom, who is furious that they rated his food as lousy. In defense, Dan mentions that he has tried to change the menu several times, but the owner's arrogance has prevented it. In the evening, during the dinner service, Ramsay finds several blocks of meatloaf as hard as rocks, along with a side of frozen calamari. But of course, according to Tom, that's how people like it. Ramsey takes some of the frozen meatloaf to use as a pair of Greek-style maracas, a message he thinks Tom will understand. They honestly don't sound bad as instruments, but I wouldn't dare taste them. You got no balls, have you? I got a lot of balls. Mine is bigger and stronger. I understand he was acting tough, but that last part just sounded weird. To prove his point, Gordon challenges him to go out to the dining room with the blocks of meatloaf. Of course, Tom refuses because he finds it humiliating. Although for serving that to his customers, he's pretty brave. In search of someone with some sanity, Gordon turns to Andrea, who acknowledges all the restaurant's problems, especially the awful food. Also in the dining room, Ramsay asks the waiters to clarify which dishes were frozen and which were fresh. It's kind of embarrassing for them, but the customers deserve to know what they're eating. Hearing so many complaints, 
Ramsay returns to the kitchen to inspect it thoroughly. He finds a bag of scallops thawing that have a pretty awful smell. Ah, but they smell like the real ocean, according to Tom. I can't even imagine the things this man must have eaten. If that's not enough, Tom keeps insisting that the scallops don't lose their quality when thawed, and in fact are even superior to serving fresh scallops. Rule number one when studying to be a chef, fresh food doesn't smell, taste better once it's frozen. I find it hard to believe that it even needed to be stated. I assume that was just common knowledge. Tom's clearly still in denial. I don't understand why he called Ramsay if he wouldn't take his criticism. Isn't that the question that plagues most Kitchen Nightmares owners? The good news is that at least Andrea has some common sense and is willing to make changes. The next day, Ramsay goes on a local radio station to hear the community's criticisms of the old hitching post. As expected, all the feedback was unfavorable and some individuals even got sick after eating there. Armed with evidence, Gordon returns to the restaurant to talk to the staff. Tom maintains that he's not a dictator, but rather follows a strict routine, while Janice suggests he's not very open to new ideas. At this moment, Tom begins to reflect and acknowledges that he hasn't evolved in quite some time, feeling stuck in his ways. He realizes he had been waiting for a brighter day, yet understands that change is necessary to make it happen. To kick off the transformations, Ramsay introduces freshly prepared meatloaves from local sources for the staff to sample. After everyone enjoys these delicious dishes, Ramsay unveils a surprise that their very own patrons cooked them. In essence, the idea is to serve something superior to what people can make at home, which is the essence of any successful restaurant, isn't it? After Tom learns that lesson, Ramsay's team begins work on the old hitching post, which hasn't been renovated since Tom bought it almost a decade prior. Gordon transforms the place into a modern restaurant with a pleasing aesthetic, combining gray and white. The reception area was also remodeled using many reclaimed shutters. As for the secondary dining room, they removed the claustrophobic booths to open the place up and replaced it with wooden chairs and contemporary decor. I know you're Greek and you have your tradition, but these plates are not for breaking. But don't worry, Tom is more than happy with the renovation. Those plates are going to stay on the wall. Along with the new, old hitching post, Ramsay presents a menu of fresh food in capital letters. Running out of ingredients is normal, Tom, so get used to it. For the relaunch, Tom steps back to let Andrea take over the kitchen as expediter. At first, it looks like she was doing well, but sending food quickly means she might be missing some important details before they are sent out. Ramsay found a raw dish that was about to be sent out, which meant that he had to stop the cooks to remind them of the standards they must uphold for the restaurant to be successful. Thanks to that, they return to a good rhythm, and the customers love the new dishes. For his part, Tom occasionally returns to the kitchen, but only to congratulate his daughter on her efforts. At the end of a successful relaunch, Tom makes a decision he should have made a long time ago. I'm passing over this restaurant to you. I'm leaving. I want you to take care of it. I want you to be successful. As much as he was an arrogant owner, these moments always touch me. When it's time to say goodbye, Ramsey congratulates everyone on their excellent work with Tom being especially grateful. Gordon is confident that Tom made the right choice and that Andrea will skillfully manage the restaurant. The big question is, did Tom stay true to his commitment or did he revert to his old ways after the show? Gordon revisited Andrea at the old hitching post a year later to see for himself. He notices that they painted the restaurant's exterior in red, giving it a more prominent and eye-catching appearance. As for management, Andrea is still in charge of the business so much so that her father no longer frequents the place. As for the debts, she and her husband, Spiro Garnavos, a cook at the restaurant, paid them off in full. Of course, Tom was there that day, meeting Ramsay once again and treating him with the familiarity of an old friend. Tom also seemed more at ease and mentioned his plans to start a new business. Later, Ramsay chats with waitresses, Janice and Carla, who vouch for Andrea's excellent management skills and mention that the food is consistently prepared with fresh ingredients, not frozen. Nonetheless, Ramsay is eager to sample the cuisine, and he opts for the meatloaf as the perfect choice. This time, Chef Ramsay wholeheartedly gives it his seal of approval, describing it as undeniably fresh and delicious. And so ended a successful second visit for the old hitching post, whose future couldn't look more promising. Proof of this can be found in the reviews, which are generally pretty positive. On Yelp, it is rated 3.7 stars based on 109 reviews, while on TripAdvisor, it is 4 stars based on 102 reviews. Let's review some of the most interesting reviews from the viewers of the show. 
This is by far one of the best restaurants I've been to in Massachusetts. The service is great. The staff is very friendly, kind, attentive, and truly one of a kind. The best comfort food you will find in all of Plymouth County. Overall, these are the current comments about the old hitching post. Beyond a few complaints. All restaurants have their bad days. Andrea and her husband successfully led the old hitching post until they sold it in August 2022 to Lori and Jason Cook of Pembroke, a nearby town. According to this Whitman Hansen Express article, Andrea and Spiro officially bought the business from Tom in 2014, but we should count 2012 as the year they took over. After 10 years of management, they decided to sell the restaurant. It's been home to us. We've made so many friends. I thank the community, Hansen, all the surrounding towns. We've had a really good run, and these two are going to have a great run. They didn't clarify why they made the decision, but probably had other projects in mind. In addition, they significantly increased the restaurant's value over the years. Jason and Laurie Cook had previous experience in the business, owning Somewhere Else Tavern in Pembroke and Fork in the Road Deli in Bryantville. Both the restaurant and the catering service enjoy good reviews, so we can be sure that the old hitching post fell into good hands. Here is the official notice about the Garnavos family parting ways with the restaurant. While the Garnavoses say goodbye, the new owners kept the staff and the restaurant name to carry on their legacy. Beyond that, I couldn't find any recent information on Andrea beyond her Facebook profile with old photos that hasn't been updated in almost a decade. But from those same photos, I can assume she's spending time with her family. She doesn't seem to have much of an online presence. Lasting 10 years at the helm and over 17 years total definitely means this was a kitchen nightmare success story. As for what happened to Tom, he opened a restaurant and bar called Fotini's in Bolton. After nine years of skillfully serving Italian and Greek food, he sold it for a million dollars. Not bad, Tom. Not bad at all. Tom has no social media presence, but is undoubtedly enjoying his retirement, as he said in the Telegram and Gazette article. And so we come to the end of one of Kitchen Nightmare's most successful stories. Father and daughter patched up their differences, both personally and professionally. The perfect outcome. Thank you.